So how is Aqua feeling? I'm going to ask, what are you feeling, seeing, feeling, seeing, and thinking right now? What is Aquarius feeling, seeing, and thinking at the moment? What is Aquarius feeling? Wow, actually, this looks good. I feel like you have been working hard to produce some results. This could be a spiritual project, even a romantic project, a work project, but you are, um, if you haven't seen these results coming in yet, you're going to. Um, and this is something that you did yourself, you know, as you know, um, this person manifests. What, what do we mean when we say manifests? They use their mind in combination with other physical things that they have, um, but they do it with confidence and they have a blueprint in their head, you know, of what they want to do. There's a huge emphasis. So I think in general, what you're seeing and feeling are both good. Um, you're seeing the results of some work that you've done confidence that you've had, um, and possibly, uh, you know, a little, a little use of the esoteric, uh, speaking of the esoteric, Takahashi's just going crazy there. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so you're seeing results. How, what else is Aqua feeling and seeing? Wow, do you need a reading tonight? <laughs> this is amazing. Um, it all looks good. It all looks good. I do see you, however, Aquarius. Notice how you seem to be moving away from that happiness once you got it. I wonder, is the commitophobe in you kicking in? What is Aquarius um, seeing, feeling, and thinking? I think you're very stable right now. The only thing you could be is a bit bored. A tiny bit bored. Oh, you've got some, oh, not for long. Um, you have some incoming communication, okay? It should be good because this is the Eight of Wands. Um, usually that's um, communication that's passionate. Sometimes we call it the Arrows of Love. What is this incoming communication? Okay, just, you know, just when everything's going fine. Well, actually, this doesn't have to be so bad. Um, so it's the chariot. So the ch and a chariot is incoming, Aqua. Hold up everything. So I always say that this person wins on physical planes. This, this is the kind of person um, that can be very unemotional. Um, and in fact, they have to do that in order to win. Um, I just want to show you, I don't know who this is, Aqua, but I feel like it's your person. I feel like it's someone from your past, and they're coming. Not only are they coming, but they're coming quickly because this is the chariot. This person is very powerful. They always win, but they win on physical planes. And what I mean by that... All right, so um, with this chariot, you can see there's a little bit of a river, okay, behind him. Well, there, there is a river, and it, it divides this land with this land. He's, um, so he's sort of in front of the river, or he's below it, okay? Um, so that river, ah, uh, the tape is going to cut, hang on. Sorry, Aqua. So as I was saying, that river, okay, behind him, um, we call that... Well, I mean, um, in, in Kabbalistic tarot, it's called the Great Abyss, okay? And you know what it is? Um, so, it is, if you think of the Tree of Life, okay, if you think of the top of Tree of Life as being spirit, you know, or things that you can't see, all right? Um, you just trust that it's there. Um, and everything below it are, are things that are in physical, you know, in the physical world. This guy is in the physical world. So the um, the river represents the, the, the space between Keter and everything else that's in creation. And, and they call it the great abyss, okay? 
So he's in front of the abyss. So, you know, people we it, tell a story about this guy, you know, uh, when we're talking about the tree of life, if he were to go up to, for example, um, the high priestess, um, who's who's way up there, you know, uh, um, just right underneath Keter on the top level um, with your card, the fool. So she's up there and, and, and this guy in this chariot, you know, comes up to her and says, you know, show me the scroll. And she, you know, she has the scroll in her, in her lap. And so she, she could unroll it and show it to him, but he would, he wouldn't be able to read it. He'd have to say, you know, what does it say? <laughs> and then, you know, if she, the, the, the way it goes, the story goes that if she, she asked him questions, um, he wouldn't be able to answer the questions. So um, this person is, yes, they are powerful. They are strong. You might be very attracted to them, but they win on physical planes. Um, so careful. Anyway, <laughs> they're coming. Okay, they're coming. Um, and this person might also be unemotional, okay? Um, this card is just so full of symbolism. Do I, I don't know if I have the original card here. Um, so this, this person is unemotional, powerful, unemotional. Um, this breastplate here is um, on his shoulders. He's got, uh, they look like little crescent moons, okay? You know how in drama there's the happy and then there's the sad and they're there's these two um, emotions that are, are opposite. Um, so he is unmoved between these. But these are not really supposed to be emotions. They're more like guilty, innocent. Um, they, um, in, uh, so, you know, in, uh, in the Jewish tradition, um, well, frankly, <clears throat> Hebrew um, high priests used to wear a, a breastplate, okay? And it would have... Um, a hoshin on it, which had, sorry guys, and this guy is definitely not a priest, <laughs> a high priest. Um, but in, you know, in Jewish tradition, the um, Hebrew high priests would have a breastplate also. And they also had those two um, symbols of um, uh, Urim and Thummim. And um, they were supposed to represent guilty and innocent. He would, you know, the high priest would sometimes have two objects that, um, <laughs> he would actually use to ask God if, if something is, is right or wrong or if this person was guilty or innocent. Um, I think it was um, Ermin that meant guilty, okay? <laughs> and uh, Thummin that meant innocent. But I mean, it's ridiculous. Here's the thing. This person acts like they have no emotion, but they, they do they do have emotion. Um, they, you know, they, they, the reason why they rein in their emotion is to keep very balanced. And they might be a little bit spiritual, but they won't tell you, you know, like they might believe in astrology. I'm only saying that because this canopy up here um, with the stars on it, um, <clears throat> uh, you know, the, the Masons used to, um, that Arthur Edward Waite, who, um, who created the, uh, the deck, this deck. Um, he studied um, the Masons and he used a lot of uh, their symbol. He actually became a Mason. He was actually a staunch Catholic. He was raised a, a Catholic um, and then sort of, you know, shrugged himself out of the Catholic Church and went into, um, into all sorts of other traditions. He just was incredible, an incredible man. But anyway, um, he discovered that, um, that the Masons would paint their ceilings uh, Masons were into magic and things like that, and, you know, um, spirit. But they would paint their ceilings um, um, dark blue, and, and they would have stars on them because they believed um, in the forces, you know, that the, the, um, that the planets, the positions of the planets have an impact on, uh, on us and on our future. Okay, so this person is coming in. Okay, he's going to have an impact, all right. What's going to happen? When this person comes in, oh, I'm not allowed to tell you. Wow. Oh, come on. I can't believe this. Okay, I'm going to switch decks. If she doesn't speak, okay, I'm, these t this is what, what's going to happen is something incredible. Aqua, there's just you. The, 
and these two on the top of the tree of life. Like, wow. Uh, the, you know, this is quite an incredible split, especially since I'm reading for Aquarius. Because essentially we have you, um, we don't have your card here, but you're, you're the querent, you're the fool. Um, then we have card, your card number zero, alpha. And then we have um, the, the magician, number one. And we have number two, the high priestess. Um, these are incredibly, these are, I mean, everything else in the major and minor arcana are created from you three. There, there's nobody else. Um, the, if whatever is going to happen, someone is manifesting this. I don't know if it's you or your person. It is a giant big secret. Um, this is not allowed to be spoken about right now. <laughs> I'm going to... Gently put this deck away and get feelings, okay? What I'm going to do, this that's a new deck, by the way. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to... So you're feeling good. I'm going to find out how your person is feeling, okay? What are the feelings um, toward Aqua from their person, please? Wow. So, uh, whew, we've got a nine and a seven. This is good. Seven of pentacles, nine of pentacles. Um, so your person is single right now. This is good. If, if they're not single, they're definitely wanting to be so. Um, if they put down roots somewhere, they are um, preparing to, to um, pull them up. Um, okay, so how is um, Aquarius' person feeling? Wow. Uh, these are pretty powerful cards. So in um, this Millennium Thoth deck, um, card number eight, I know this seems weird, um, but in this deck, it's called Adjustment. And it means literally that, that the universe is about to adjust something. Um, probably because somebody invested in the wrong person. There is a major <laughs> adjustment coming. Wow. And I think your person is the one planning on doing this. So Aqua, your person, yep. And look at the chariot. Again, the chariot just came up in the second step to do an adjustment. So your person, I mean, you could be seeing a cancer, but it doesn't have to be. I'll describe this person. I've already described them. They, they're a winner. Okay. They're not very emotional. They can be a bit forceful and controlling. <laughs> They're going to adjust things. Okay, they're coming for you, Aqua. What should Aquarius expect besides a major adjustment? And Herman and Thuman and the Chariot and the Great Abyss. Um, okay, um, one, one, two, and three. What's the verdict? A fiery climax approaches. Okay, now, Aqua, don't go too crazy. Okay, okay. <laughs> that was quite an amazing reading. Okay, congrats, whatever is being done. I feel like your person is doing this work. Um, you might have thought it, thought about it, but they're definitely doing the physical work now. Okay, let me know what happens. 